In the sex talks, we tend to focus on sex, vaginal, anal, and oral, when it comes to explaining what is sex. Recently, I was talking with a parent and she wanted to know if she should explain digital sex at the same time she was explaining sex. Now, this is a great question because there seems to be some confusion on what is sex. Some folks have said to me, it's just vaginal, penis goes into the vagina activity. While others have said it's any sexual activity that has an exchange of vaginal and seminal fluid between partners. And some have said sex includes the exchange of vaginal and seminal fluid, which includes the rubbing of one's genitals with another person's genitals without any penetration, as well as digital or manual sex. So parents, let's define outer course and inner course and how and when we should be talking to our kids about it. I'm Kathleen and I make videos for parents on how to have the modern day sex talks. Generally speaking, outer course includes all activities that are intended to be sexually stimulating, but does not include any penetration. The definition of outer course tends to include no vaginal, anal, or oral sex, as well as manual sex. Sexual activities like kissing, touching, rubbing of bodies with clothes on are examples of outer course. When I was a middle and high school sex ed teacher, I explained to students that they got to decide what behaviors were acceptable to engage in when defining outer course for themselves. I encourage them to think about the behaviors from a bodily fluid transmission or skin to skin contact activity. Because the key was to protect their sexual health when engaging in sexual activities. And one easy way to do that was to limit bodily fluid transmission and skin to skin contact. It's important to be able to say to a potential partner, these are these sexual activities that I feel comfortable engaging in, blah, 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 blah. And I would like for you to respect my boundaries. This is one way to help young people understand and explore the range of sexual activities and to let them know that outer course can be its own standalone activity, or it could be the sexual activities that lead to intercourse. Intercourse, or more specifically, sexual intercourse, is when the genitals come together. And usually the penis entering the vagina or anus is referred to as intercourse. Because not everybody engages in vaginal and anal sex, the definition of intercourse has become more accepted as vaginal, anal, oral, and manual sex. The idea here is that the definition is more inclusive and acknowledges the variety of sexual orientations when it comes to defining sex. So as parents, when your seven, eight, or nine-year-old asks you what sex, how much detail should you go into? I typically tell parents that when they're explaining sex to their intermediate age child, ages seven, eight, or nine, to make sure that they are including vaginal, anal, and oral all together. And I get a lot of pushback from parents saying that they just wanna explain vaginal sex, not anal nor oral. But by providing this definition of sex as vaginal, anal, and oral, you are being inclusive and honest and giving them what's deemed as the high risk sexual behaviors that can cause pregnancy, as well as STI and STD transmission. At the intermediate age, kids want to learn and they are curious, but the vast majority have not gone through puberty. They will most likely think that the idea of sex is gross and weird and shocked that adults actually do that. This idea that sex is pleasurable and enjoyable is not quite in their understanding yet. So after you explain that sex includes vaginal, anal, and oral, should you explain manual sex? Some parents may choose to include manual sex in their explanation of what is sex, because bodily fluids may be transmitted to the hand and therefore there is a possibility of an infection. Other parents may choose not to explain manual sex here because they deem the behavior to be a low risk sexual activity, meaning that the transmission of bodily fluid is so low that the possibility of an infection is rare. My recommendations is to discuss this with your co-parent and decide which category you wanna put it in. And then at some point during the intermediate age, explain vaginal, anal, and oral and manual sex. There's no perfect answer here, but no matter what, you are explaining manual sex to your kid at some point during the intermediate age. Therefore, they are aware and understand what it is and why someone might want to engage in it. Yes, there are a lot of different ways to be sexually stimulated. Cyber sex, phone sex, dry sex are all sexual activities. I think many folks who ask me about whether or not they should include these sexual activities when they're explaining sex to their kid for the very first time, forget that the sex talks are not meant to be a one-time talk where you lecture them and explain everything all at once. 
The idea here is that you are showing your kid that you want them to come to you with their questions and that you are willing to answer their questions in a medically accurate and age appropriate way. And I'll remind you that you're laying a foundation for future sex talks. Don't think of it as being dishonest with them because you haven't explained every single sex act that is known, but look at it as you have now given them the basic components that you can now build upon in the future. Starting the definition of sex with a foundation of vaginal, anal, and oral is a good start for the intermediate age. And if you're uncomfortable explaining those three types of sex, ask yourself why, because clearly there are a lot more explanations of sex to come in the sex talks. If you found this video to be helpful, please go on and give it a like. I'm Kathleen and I'll be back next week with another video.